How you doing guys? Uh, this is my first video in a long time, probably a year. Uh, for those who don't know, my YouTube name is Too Phased. I've been a, been a poster of a lot of Lord of the Rings Toy Biz videos for the last three years and I thought I'd give you a big update on what I have today. I have a lot of cool new pieces to show and a few other lines to discuss, so here we go. In the back there is a 22 inch Smaug from the Bridge Direct. Sadly a wave that just kind of crashed and burned. Didn't release a lot and there's a few rare pieces including this one. I would highly recommend but I heard it's pretty disappointing to open. I'm a huge Breaking Bad fan so as you can see I've started collecting the Mezco line. They're all pretty awesome here and it's hazmat suits with Jesse Pinkman. But today's more about Lord of the Rings toy biz, so I'll stay on task as much as I can here. That's Arwen in her white dress, pretty rare piece, part of the 12 inch doll line. One of Sauron's dark servants, it's from the Black Gates of Mordor gift pack. In the background there you have the Moria Orc, Gandalf the White in his actual white robes, slight variant. And of course the Twilight Frodo. Now we'll go down here. We have more Breaking Bad stuff. A couple Comic Con exclusives. Been collecting this line quite a bit this last year. A little Gus Fring prototype and another Walter White exclusive. Pretty awesome line. And here we have the Hobbit Bridge Direct line. That's called Yaznig. Um, long story on that guy, because he didn't actually appear in the movies, but apparently this was what the original Azog was supposed to look like, and then they kind of beefed him up to look more like this. It's another 3.75 inch scale model here from the UK as well. Couple Comic Cons in the background, Invisible Bilbo, another 7 inch Azog. Couple of the goblins up front here. There's a cool line, but like I said, it just seemed to be too big for them. They just tried to do what Toy Biz did and failed terribly. This is a pretty cool piece. Um, as you can see, it's Gandalf the White and Shadow Fax in a Ring Wraith box, part of the Horse Rider series. Um, never ever seen this anywhere else, so I thought it was pretty cool and probably decently rare too. And then on the bottom here, we have the Canadian exclusive carry case. Easily one of the best pieces out there for sure. It's got about eight different figures inside, including a uh, Peter Jackson only released in Canada which I always found pretty fascinating and we got Ellen Deal, Armor Cave Troll, Morgul Lord Witch King here's another rare piece from the UK it's uh, as you can see Saruman and Sauron double pack called the Lords of Darkness definitely a good piece to get your hands on a little tougher to find you might pay over a hundred dollars for it but this one's in good condition, picked it up on eBay. And over here we got the red cave troll. Only difference between this one and the green box version is this one has a protective window on it. Uh, a lot of the original green box versions didn't and the face got pretty roughed up and damaged quickly because of the latex quality I guess. So they re-released it and packaged it. It's pretty cool. And then down here we have the Burger King exclusives. Um, I've had the alerts for a while. You can find that one pretty much anywhere online for about 40, 50 bucks. That was the re-release. But uh, this one you definitely want to get your hands on. Extremely hard to find. Uh, as you can see, I relented and bought this one on eBay even though the box was in pretty rough shape. I just, I've never 
been able to locate one online. It's very hard to come by, so I bought it at a discounted price. Still a little more than I wanted to pay for, but I might never come across this one again, so uh, I'll probably do individual reviews on these two right away here, just to show the difference between the two. But the backstory right now is they re -re or they released the Burger King Urukai here and sold out so fast that they sent an apology letter to all the other customers and gave them alerts, hence the two different boxes. Pretty cool item. Um, a lot of collectors don't even know Burger King had an exclusive out there, so it's pretty cool. Up here we have a bunch of the Epic Trilogy line, Morgulord Witch King, very rare piece there. I have a Minas Tirith Guard, Moria Orc Archer back there. I have two Gondorian Swordsmen, and I have two of these Orc Lieutenants as well. The Orc Lieutenant, this was pretty much the final wave of the entire toy line. So they weren't really released to the public, and if they were, extremely minimal value. So you definitely want to get your hands on either of these two, plus the Gondorian Swordsman. They're all rare, they're all pretty expensive, but you definitely want to get your hands on them for sure. And I got a little diorama set up here, Treebeard and his Hobbits. Kind of a mixed bag. Some of my favorite loose figures and uh, quite a few of the Bridge Direct line as well. Frodo and Sam and their boat in the Fellowship. You got Radagast and Azog and Thor and Oakenshield and Bilbo. You got Gollum, the man who made it all happen, Peter Jackson. Frodo with a Ringwraith diorama. It's a very cool piece. You see the one ring there? It's pretty awesome. And of course, the Dark Lord Sauron in all his glory. And back here we have the Deluxe Cloth Capes Edition. Um, I'm sorry you can't see it that well. Um, I did do a review on this piece individually a long time ago. I might decide to do more again. But they got the cloth capes and then they re-released it with the plastic capes. So if you're wondering which one is the most collectible, it's the one with the cloth capes, the Lorian capes. You got the Fell Beast. Probably one of the most badass pieces that Toy Biz released. It's about 21 inches. I would love to open one up one of these days. Maybe I'll get a second one. Got a Hobbit pack, Freedom to Adoras, UK pack. Now we're going to the really rare ones right here. Australian exclusives. You got the Boromir and the Half Moon box. And of course, the Helm's Deep Gimli. Um, apparently only 500 made worldwide. I'd say the second rarest action figure in the Toy Biz line. Um, you get your hands on these, you're golden. It's worth a pretty penny. I could probably sell it from four to $500 nowadays, each one. I found two a few years back for pretty good prices. Yeah, Australian exclusive, Helm's Deep Gimli. Hard to find. If you do find one, uh, pick it up immediately. It's definitely worth it. Little panoramic view. <laughs> Not really panoramic, but kind of a cool view from the outside here. I have about 75 loose figures from the Toy Biz line, much like that, but unfortunately they're packed away in storage, just don't have the house space right now. And then we'll zoom over here. Of course we got a couple of Gandalf, one from the Hobbit line, one from Toy Biz and the 11 inch models. Gandalf's my favorite character easily, so that is why they're just hanging out there. And then right here we have the Arwen Asphaloth blue boxed edition from the Return of the King. 
Uh, definitely one of the more rare horse and rider sets for sure. This one's extremely hard to get your hands on. Um, but it's in excellent shape. Once again, I did find it on a random toy site. There's a few of these kicking out there, so if you definitely get your hands on one, pick it up because this one's quite rare. And this final one, the moment I've been waiting for for about six years now, just came in the mail about half an hour ago. I couldn't wait to get it on camera and show the other collectors out there. Arwen Asphaloth Red Pack. Holy crap, I couldn't believe I found this online. Um, some guy in Ireland had randomly posted this pack individually, along with the Twilight Frodo and another Helm's Deep Gimli. I saved it in my watch list, um, still not believing that it was there, and with about five seconds left, I placed the first bid for about 800 bucks and happen to win it. This, for all of you Lord of the Rings enthusiasts and Toy Biz collectors, this is the holy grail of the entire line. Arwen Asphaloth Red Pack. You can't find it anywhere. Um, rumor has it it was only released in certain countries in Western Europe. I've heard stories that less than 200 were made like I don't even know how many were made but it's near impossible to find this uh, so I gotta give a shout out to Erigu and um, Benjamin Shank two fellow collectors who I'm subscribed to on YouTube they also have this piece in their possession but I am happy to just say that I now have it in mine I'm still shocked that I'm looking at this right now but that's that's it. This is the rarest action figure in the entire Toy Biz line. So if you have this, you're definitely laughing. It's, like I said, impossible. You should be able to find this one. There's several, countless amounts of the green box version. But none of these. So, thank you to the eBayer who decided to part with this on eBay. <laughs> It's now in my possession forever, so I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to probably chuckle to myself like a huge dork every time I look at it. But There she goes. Arwen Asphaloth Red Pack. And all of the rest of my Toy Biz gems. Thank you for your patience, thanks for watching this video, and uh, feel free to subscribe and check out all my other solo videos. If you are interested in learning more about these, please ask me any questions you want. Um, I've been doing a lot of research over the years, and I'm happy to say that I have a lot of these Toy Biz pieces in my possession now. Anyway, that's it guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you later.